Eugene Cernan. Eugene Andrew Cernan, March 14, 1934, January 16, 2017, was an American astronaut, naval aviator, electrical engineer, aeronautical engineer, and fighter pilot. During the Apollo 17 mission, Cernan became the 11th man to walk on the moon. As he re-entered the Apollo lunar module after Harrison Schmidt on their third and final lunar excursion, he is the last man to walk on the moon as of 2022. Before becoming an astronaut, Cernan graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering from Purdue University and joined the U.S. Navy. After flight training, he received his naval aviator wings and served as a fighter pilot. In 1963, he received a Master of Science degree in aeronautical engineering from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. Achieving the rank of captain, he retired from the Navy in 1976. Cernan traveled into space three times and to the moon twice, as pilot of Gemini 9 and in June 1966, as lunar module pilot of Apollo 10 in May 1969, and as commander of Apollo 17 in December 1972, the final Apollo lunar landing. Cernan was also a backup crew member of the Gemini 12, Apollo 7, and Apollo 14 space missions. Biography Early Years Cernan was born on March 14, 1934, in Chicago, Illinois. He was the son of Rosny Sittler, 1898-1991, and Andrew George Cernan, 1904-1967. His father was of Slovak descent, and his mother was of Czech ancestry. Cernan grew up in the Illinois towns of Bellwood and Maywood. He was a Boy Scout and earned the rank of second class. After attending McKinley Elementary School in Bellwood and graduating from Proviso Township High School in Maywood in 1952, he studied at Purdue University, where he became a member of the Phi Gamma Delta fraternity. At Purdue, Cernan was also president of the Quarter Deck Society and the Scabbard and Blade, and a member of the Phi Eta Sigma Honor Society and Tau Beta Pi Engineering Honor Society. He was on the Military Ball Committee and was a member of the Skull and Crescent Leadership Honor Society. After his sophomore year, he accepted a partial Navy ROC scholarship that required him to serve aboard USS Roanoke between his junior and senior years. In 1956, Cernan received a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. His final GPA was 5.1 out of 6.0. Navy Service Cernan was commissioned a U.S. Navy ensign through the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps at Purdue and was initially stationed on the USS Sapan. Cernan changed to active duty and attended flying training at Whiting Field, Barron Field, Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, and Naval Air Station Memphis. 2931 following flight training on the T-28 Trojan, T-33 Shooting Star, and F-9F Panther, Cernan became a naval aviator, flying FJ-4 Fury and M-4 Skyhawk jets in attack squadrons 126 and 113. 3133, 38-39, during his naval career, Cernan logged more than 5,000 hours of flying time, including 4,800 hours in jet aircraft. Cernan also made at least 200 successful landings on aircraft carriers. NASA career In October 1963, NASA selected Cernan as one of the third group of astronauts to participate in the Gemini and Apollo space programs. Gemini program. Cernan was originally selected with Thomas Stafford as backup pilot for Gemini 9. When the prime crew of Elliott C. and Charles Bassett was killed in the crash of NASA T-38 and 901 USAF Serial 63 at Lambert Field on February 28, 1966, the backup crew became the prime crew the first time in NASA history this happened. Gemini 9 had encountered a number of problems. The original target vehicle exploded during launch and the planned docking with a substitute target vehicle was made impossible 
by the failure of a protective shroud to separate after launch. The crew, however, performed a rendezvous that simulated procedures that would be used in the Apollo 10 mission, the first optical rendezvous and a lunar orbit abort rendezvous. Cernan performed the second American EVA, the third ever spacewalk, but overexertion caused by a lack of limb restraints prevented testing of the astronaut maneuvering unit and forced the early termination of the spacewalk. Cernan was also a backup pilot for the Gemini 12 mission. Apollo Program Apollo 10 Cernan was selected for the lunar module pilot position on the backup crew for Apollo 7, although that flight carried no lunar module. Standard crew rotation put him in place as the lunar module pilot on Apollo 10, the final dress rehearsal mission for the first Apollo lunar landing on May 18, 26, 1969. During the Apollo 10 mission, Cernan and his commander, Tom Stafford, piloted the lunar module Snoopy in lunar orbit to within 8.5 nautical miles 15.7 km of the lunar surface and successfully executed every phase of a lunar landing up to final powered descent. This provided NASA planners with critical knowledge of technical systems and lunar gravitational conditions to enable Apollo 11 to land on the moon two months later. Apollo 10 holds the record for the highest speed attained by any crewed vehicle at 39,000 897 km slash H24,000. Apollo 17. Cernan turned down the opportunity to walk on the moon as lunar module pilot of Apollo 16, preferring to risk missing a flight for the opportunity to command his own mission. Cernan moved back into the Apollo rotation as commander of the backup crew of Cernan, Ronald E. Evans, and Joe Ingle for Apollo 14 putting him in position through normal crew rotation to command his own crew on Apollo 17. Escalating budget cutbacks for NASA, however, brought the number of future lunar missions into question. After the cancellation of Apollo 15 in its original H-class profile and Apollo 19 in September 1970, pressure from the scientific community to shift Harrison Schmidt, the sole professional geologist in the active Apollo roster of astronauts, to the crew of Apollo 17, the final scheduled Apollo mission, mounted. In August 1971, NASA named Schmidt as the lunar module pilot for Apollo 17, which meant the original LM pilot Joe Ingle never had the opportunity to walk on the moon. Cernan fought to keep his crew together, given the choice of flying with Schmidt as a lempi or seeing his entire crew removed from Apollo 17, Cernan chose to fly with Schmidt. Cernan eventually came to have a positive evaluation of Schmidt's abilities. He concluded that Schmidt was an outstanding LM pilot while Engel notwithstanding his outstanding record as an aircraft test pilot was merely an adequate one. Cernan's role as commander of Apollo 17 closed out the Apollo program's lunar exploration mission with a number of record-setting achievements. During the three days of Apollo 17's surface activity deck, 11-14-1972, Cernan and Schmidt performed three EVAs for a total of about 22 hours of exploration of the taurus latro Valley. Their first EVA alone was more than three times the length astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent outside the Elam on Apollo 11. During this time, Cernan and Schmidt covered more than 35 km 22 my using the lunar roving vehicle and spent a great deal of time collecting geologic samples including a record 34 kg 75, the most of any Apollo mission that would shed light on the moon's early history. Cernan piloted the rover on its final sortie, recording a maximum speed of 11.2 mph 18.0 km slash h, giving him the unofficial lunar land speed record. As Cernan prepared to climb the ladder for the final time, he spoke these words, currently the last spoken by a human being standing on the lunar surface. Bob, this is Jean, and I'm on the surface, and, as I take man's last step from the surface, back home for some time to come, but we believe not too long into the future, I'd like to just say what I believe history will record, that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And, as we leave the moon at Taurus Latro, we leave as we came and, God willing, 
as we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Godspeed, the crew of Apollo 17. Cernan's status as the last person to walk on the moon means Purdue University is the alma mater of both the first person to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong, and the most recent. Cernan is one of only three astronauts to travel to the moon on two occasions, the others being Jim Lovell and John Young. He is also one of only 12 people to have walked on the moon. Post-NASA activities In 1976, Cernan retired from the Navy with the rank of captain and went from NASA into private business, becoming executive vice president of Carl Petroleum, Inc. In 1981 and 1982, Cernan joined Frank Reynolds and Jules Bergman on the extensive ABC coverage of the first three space shuttle launches. Many hours of these ABC broadcasts have been uploaded to YouTube in recent years. From 1987, he was a contributor to ABC News and the weekly segment of its Good Morning America program titled Breakthrough, which covered health, science, and medicine. In 1999, with co-author Donald A. Davis, he published his memoir The Last Man on the Moon, which is about his naval and NASA career. He is featured in the space exploration documentary In the Shadow of the Moon, in which he said, Truth needs no defense and nobody can take those footsteps I made on the surface of the moon away from me. Cernan also contributed to the book of the same name. Cernan and Neil Armstrong testified before U.S. Congress in 2010 in opposition to the cancellation of the Constellation program, which had been initiated during the George W. Bush administration as part of the vision for space exploration with the aim of returning humans to the moon and eventually Mars, but was deemed underfunded and unsustainable by the Augustine Commission in 2000. Cernan paired his criticism of the cancellation of Constellation with expressions of skepticism about commercial resupply services CRS and commercial crew development CCDEV, NASA's planned replacements for that program's role in supplying cargo and crew. Such companies, Cernan warned, do not yet know what they don't know. Cernan's view of commercial space companies, in particular SpaceX, which participates in both programs underwent a positive shift after being debriefed by SpaceX venture capitalist Steve Jervetson as part of his effort to obtain the signatures of nine Apollo astronauts on a photograph. Eventually, Cernan was won over and signed the photograph. As I told him these stories of heroic entrepreneurship, I could see his mind turning. Jervetson wrote he found a reconciliation. I never read any of this in the news. Why doesn't the press report on this? Cernan gave a eulogy at Armstrong's funeral in 2012. In 2014, Cernan appeared in the documentary The Last Man on the Moon, made by British filmmaker Mark Craig and based on Cernan's 1999 memoir of the same title. The film received the Texas Independent Film Award from Houston Film Critics Society and the Movies for Grown Ups Award from ARP the magazine. Personal life. Cernan was married twice and had one daughter. His first wife was Barbara Jean Ashley, a flight attendant for Continental Airlines, whom he married in 1961. They had one daughter, Tracy, born in 1963. The couple separated in 1980 and divorced in 1981. They remained friends. His second marriage was to Janie's Nana Cernan which lasted for nearly 30 years from 1987 until his death. Cernan gained two stepdaughters, Kelly and Daniel. Death Cernan died in a hospital in Houston on January 16, 2017, at the age of 82. His funeral was held at St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston. He was buried with full military honors at Texas State Cemetery. The first astronaut to be buried there in a private service on January 25, 2017. Organizations Cernan was a member of several organizations, including Fellow American Astronautical Society, member, Society of Experimental Test Pilots, member, Tau Beta Pi National Engineering Society, Sigma Xi National Science Research Society, Phi Gamma Delta National Social Fraternity, and the Explorers Club. Awards and honors. 
Naval Aviator Astronaut Insignia, Navy Distinguished Service Medal, Gold Star Device in lieu of Second Award, 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 Distinguished Flying Cross, National Defense Service Medal, NASA Distinguished Service Medal, NASA Exceptional Service Medal, Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy, 2007, U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame, Slovakia, Grand Officer, or Second Class of the Order of the White Double Cross, September 25, 1994. Great American Award, the All-American Boys Chorus, 2014. Cernan was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame at the San Diego Air and Space Museum in 2007. Orbital ATK announced the naming of its Cygnus CRSO Aminus 80 cargo delivery spacecraft, the SS Jean Cernan, in honor of Cernan in October 2017. The SS Jean Cernan successfully launched to the International Space Station on November 12, 2017. Cernan, along with nine of his Gemini astronaut colleagues, was inducted into the International Space Hall of Fame in 1982. In popular culture, on July 2, 1974, Cernan was a roaster of Don Rickles on the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. At the end of the roast, Rickles, who attended the Apollo 17 launch, paid tribute to Cernan as a delightful, wonderful, great hero. In the 1998 Primetime Emmy Award-winning HBO miniseries From the Earth to the Moon, Cernan was portrayed by Daniel Hugh Kelly. Cernan was featured in the Discovery Channel's 2008 documentary miniseries When We Left Earth. A popular belief is that Cernan wrote his daughter's initials on a rock on the moon, Tracy's Rock. The story and Cernan's relationship with his daughter was later adapted into Tracy's song by pop rock band No More Kings. The story is inaccurate, as Cernan wrote her initials in the dust, not on a rock. He states in the 2014 documentary The Last Man on the Moon that he wrote them in the lunar dust as he left the rover to return to the LEM and Earth. The true story of leaving the initials on the lunar surface was prominently mentioned in The Last Walt, a 2012 episode of Modern Family. A recording of Cernan's voice during the Apollo 17 mission was sampled by Daft Punk for Contact, the last track on their 2013 album Random Access Memories. Cernan's last words from the lunar surface, along with lunar module pilot Harrison Schmidt's recollections, were used by the band Public Service Broadcasting for the song Tomorrow, the final track of their 2015 album The Race for Space. The Apple TV Plus show for all mankind dramatizes the moon landings. The fictional main character draws comparisons to and shares similarity with the commander of the Apollo 17 mission, Gene Cernan.